I'm not going to lie, that intro is absolutely amazing. I mean, just the audio. Forget the crappy graphics I put on the top of it. The audio was awesome. Uh, but today, I'm going to be sharing with you the hardware specifications, comparing it to the PS3, and breaking it all down for you. So I hope you enjoy. If you do enjoy, remember to leave a like. It's much appreciated. And also, subscribe if you haven't already. But let's get started. Now, I must say before I get started in this video, this is going to be a bit of a nerd out. It's going to be a bit of a geek out. I'm going to be breaking down hardware, talking about CPUs, GPUs, Hertz, uh, teraflops, all that shit. So, um, you know, if you're not really into that technical stuff, the basic idea is it's a hell of a lot faster than the PS3. And also, it's... Um, yeah, it's just miles better than the PS3. Like, you thought the PS3 was good. Me, it's bigger brother, the PS4. It's going to knock your socks off. So, yeah, it's going to get technical, but uh, I think it's totally worth it. So let's break it down. Starting us off, the console, like the PS3, is going to have eight small cores, CPU structure. And originally in the PS3, it had they created their own... Um, architecture which if you're not too technical basically what that means is just the way the hardware works with the rest of the hardware uh it's processing it doesn't really matter all you need to know is it's not the same as your computer whereas now uh just like the xbox just like the pc it's going to be running on the similar uh x86 processing architecture i'm not too technical myself but you know all you need to know the basic background of that is it's now going to be easier to port games to the PlayStation. Before the PS3 was renowned to be a bit of a pain in the backside, that's when that's why when you played games like Call of Duty, it was a little bit laggy, it just didn't feel right compared to the Xbox and PC. Uh, but now it has the same architecture and it means it's going to run a lot more smoother and be a lot easier for developers to develop on. So that's the CPU out the way. It's uh that's a pretty technical bit right there. If you made it this far, you're doing well. Next up, I didn't mean that to sound <laughs> condescending at all. Uh, the next bit is dedicated GPU. Now, the PS3 had a dedicated GPU, but it was very, very small and almost not worth having in the console. It didn't do very much. Uh, this dedicated GPU graphics uh, graf graphics card, I guess you'd say, is a third faster than the original. I, I don't have, I did have the speeds, but I don't have it here on my notes. But all you need to know is about a third faster. Um, but it's not integral to the performance of the PS4 over the PS3. So we're coming up to that bit now. RAM. RAM in the computer. You've got RAM in yours. If you've got a laptop, if you've got a mobile phone, they all have RAM at some point or another. The PS4, uh, sorry, the PS3 had, I think it was 256 megabytes worth of RAM, which is pretty shit. Like, your laptop, if it's relatively new, will probably have anything between 2 and 4. It's pretty standard at the moment. Um, this PS4 is going to have 8 gigs of RAM, which is 32 times faster than the PS3, which is astounding. If you think of how amazing the PS3 looks and some of the games it plays, now it's going to have the capability to do more things at once. It's going to be able to do more processing, more lighting, um, it's going to have more objects on the screen. It's going to be able to pull data from, it's going to be able to do more things at once. And also, you wonder why you don't have like a public chat thing like the Xbox does. It's because of the RAM. Uh, it was very limiting on the RAM side of things on the PS3. But now... The PS3 is going to have lots of RAM, so it's very probable and it's most likely going to happen that you're going to have chat, you're going to have video, and it's going to be able to cope really well with doing multiple things at once, which is really, really awesome. A bit more boring now, that was the hardcore stuff. Um, it's going to have a Blu-ray drive as well as a DVD reader as well. Uh, it's the same laser, but hey-ho, that's uh, all you need to know. It can read DVDs and Blu-rays. It's going to have USB 3 ports. It's going to have an Ethernet port. That's your internet connection on a wireless basis. It's also going to have a wireless adapter inside. Now, I'm not 100% too sure on this, but from what I could read on specification sheets online, it's going to have a wireless adapter, which, you know, the Xbox and the PS3 now have one, so it's not too much of a big deal. It's also going to have Bluetooth for the controllers. It works on a Bluetooth technology similar to in your mobile phone, but it's not going to be very advanced. It's going to be Bluetooth 2.1. I think Bluetooth is now at 4. Not too 
100% on that, but as far as I'm concerned, 2.1, I think it's the same that was in the PS3, so the technology hasn't really changed from there. It's going to have HDMI out, which is the simple HDMI cord you use to connect it to a screen and whatnot. It's going to have um, analog AV out. It's going to have digital output, which is optical. And yeah, that's the PS4 specs. It's ridiculously better than the PS3. Miles, miles better. Um, the main two key points to take away from this is one, it's a lot easier to develop on. It's going to be a lot easier for developers to, you know, develop for this and the Xbox at the same time. And it also is going to have a crap load more RAM, which is going to be allowing you to do multiple things. It's not going to affect gaming too much. The most thing it's going to affect is the way the system works. Um, so that's thing and that's like downloading things in the background or talking to people on a chat um, and that's a really really big huge boost 256 megabytes to 8 gig it's 32 times faster and yeah that's pretty awesome I uh, hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching and I'll catch you tomorrow for another video take care